welcome Dr. Connor Green, consultant paediatric orthopaedics surgeon, and Professor Damien McCormick, consultant uh, orthopaedic surgeon. Uh, in a order to adequately advocate for my patients, my colleagues, uh, I need to leave you with a very clear message today that the care of children with scoliosis in this country is absolutely inadequate. But the care of children with other orthopaedic conditions is just as bad. And that becomes alarming when I tell you that scoliosis only represents about 20% of what myself and Professor McCormick do. And therefore, actually, the real crisis is not in scoliosis. The real crisis is in everything else. So as paediatric orthopaedic surgeons, we see children with a huge potential to tribute through, contribute through their abilities to Ireland in the future. But these abilities are being destroyed physically and psychologically uh, by inadequate access to care. We're talking about children with spina bifida. These children, they're amazing, intelligent, mature children. And while these children have been waiting for surgery, they've gone from walking independently to using wheelchairs full time. They've gone from participating in school to staying at home full time and they've gone from wearing shoes to sitting at home with open sores and these aren't isolated conditions this is a this is a group of children with children with cerebral palsy the majority of these children should live independently in this country but not only that through their amazing abilities they should be able to contribute to Ireland of the future but instead these treatable foot and hip deformities that these children have leave them not only not contributing they leave them at home and pain and missing school but it's not just children with additional needs. We have children without any other medical problems at all who have got hip deformities and limb deformities. And these children are in pain and ashamed of their appearance. And they're not going to school. They're not being educated. They're not going to get an opportunity to give Ireland the benefit of their abilities. We've no universal screening for hip dysplasia. And when we've universal screening for other things, this is a silent condition. And when it's left untreated, it accounts for 40% of hip replacements in the under 50s in this country. And therefore, we're not only can, um, making the surgery around people's lives more significant, but we're increasing the economic burden to the state. We need to create a sustainable paediatric orthopaedic service for children of Ireland and for us medical professionals. And the solution cannot wait until the national hospital is delivered. And furthermore, we need and you need to understand that a building alone is not going to fix all of these problems and it is only going to lead to disappointed, disappointment. A sustainable solution is going to involve infrastructure and staffing. I can tell you that in Temple Street and Kappa, I have a group of colleagues that you would not better anywhere in the world. And I say that across nursing, therapy and my medical peers. We hold ourselves to an exceptionally high standard. You must go away for international training for two years before you have an opportunity to be a paediatric anaesthetist or a paediatric orthopaedic surgeon. And therefore, the access to care is the barrier here, definitely not the quality of care that can be delivered in this country. However, since being here the last five years, it's very clear to me that this time is coming to an end. You're not going to find people anymore drag away their families for international training. You are not going to see the nursing staff stay in that extra hour, continue in the face of adversity when there are staffs with, with staff shortages. All of this goodwill has dried up. And if we don't act now, this elite standard of care in this country is definitely going to reduce itself to yellow pack because people will not go away and train. But furthermore, it's equally likely that the next generation will leave and not come back. We're not actually asking a whole lot. We're asking to be allowed to do our job. Uh, we're asking when we come to work that there's enough staff, that we don't have to fight every morning to get a bed for our patient to come in and to, to do their operating. We're actually asking as surgeons that we would have an operating room to go to. Like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I was appointed as a surgeon with no operating room. My colleague has just been appointed with no operating room. I really hope that the new hospital is going to live up to expectations, but, but care for these children can't wait. And I know it's a ridiculous amount of money. I know it's an obscene amount of money that's been spent on the new hospital, but we still need to resource children now. In Temple Street, our clinical director has been fighting hard for one theatre to be delivered by the end of next year. Like, why is it not two? 
Why, why are we waiting until next year? You know, the American army can set up a hospital in a desert overnight. Like, why can we not have two operating rooms sooner? Um, we're both dual North American fellowship uh, trained pediat pediatric orthopedic surgeons, both of us practicing at uh, Children's University Hospital, which is Temple Street, and then the National Orthopedic Hospital, which is Kappa Kids. Um, and we're both practicing as consultant surgeons, neither of us in an administrative uh, position. Um, so scoliosis, as you know, is a, a, div a diverse uh, cohort of patients. Uh, and it affects kids in very different ways. Most of these children do not require surgery, but for those who do, some very young children with very complex disease require surgery in order to survive beyond uh, their 20s, while there's a completely different group of children in their teenage years, and why we're operating on them is uh, in order to reduce their chances of breathing difficulty, but not until the fifth or sixth decade of life. So it's, it's not a homogenous group.